Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwann and welcome to Selling Power TV. Today we continue our conversation with Jeff Seeley. He is the CEO of Karoo. Welcome, Jeff. It's great to be here, Gerhard. What, how do you define best practice? You know, it, it, that's, uh, that's kind of one of those myths that I kind of laugh about, to tell you the truth. Is because everybody talks about, let's apply best practices. Let's apply, let's go benchmark. Right. You know, let's right. go off and let's benchmark how right. this company is doing over this company. So is doing. that a weasel word? To me, that's a great description of it. I like that. I'm going to steal that. <laughs> you know, a best practice is really something that is uh, kind of a myth. It's like mythology. It's like reading Greek mythology. Right. The reality is, is what organizations need to do is create structure and culture that create everyone best practicing the way they do it best. Right. And so, for me, how I might sell. Uh, there's a benchmark, kind of the ante like poker, the big you know, sport right now is poker, there's an ante. Well, I have to have a certain ante, but how I sell could be very different than how you sell. But we both could be incredibly successful with our customers. Right. And to me, that's where organizations really miss the mark right. is, is that they right. have to have this culture right. around how to do right. it really well. See, in, in, in every sport, there's, uh, like in tennis, there's a backhand and a forehand, and, and uh, in baseball, there's pitching and catching, and in sales, that is providing information to the customer, but catching is more important, which is asking the right questions. Well, and that's, you're exactly right. And even if you think about using a sports analogy, every tennis player, you know, Federer and Nadal do not hit the ball the same way. They have very, outside the fact that one's right handed, one's left handed, they hit it very differently. And different spin. Different spins, different styles, different approaches, different strategies. And that same thing happens in sales is that really what it comes down to a great salesperson is helping their customer being a proactive problem solver. And that's a, a term that I really think that is you focus more and more on sales. It becomes how am I going to proactively problem solve for and, my customer? And I think the best situation is when the customer was not aware of the real problem. Well, and that's, that's where that proactiveness comes in because a great salesperson is looking into the future, not what they're servicing today, not what they're doing today, but looking into the future of how can I work with this customer and make this customer more successful, more competitive, help them create competitive advantage. If you, you can think about any uh, consumer product or any business product, and there's always an evolution happening with that product. Everything from as simple as paper to, you know, or boxes to as sophisticated as televisions, electronics, computers, all those different things have a product evolution. And as a proactive problem solver from a sales professional's perspective, you're really looking at what is this going to look like two and three and four generations from now, mm -hmm. and how can I help get them there faster than my competition? And I think as sales leaders, we need to help salespeople adjust to the change and uh, change their game uh, at the same rate as the product changes or as the market changes. Absolutely, and as you as you look at what's going on in the world of going forward, the next you know five to ten years right. in sales, that's where we're going to see. I think sales professionals right. rise to a different level right. because I think there's a lot of them out there who have that capability mm -hmm. who will do it and embrace the right. change. So there's no more best practice. I think I think we can declare that best practice is dead, and uh, the best practice really is of the future is being adaptive. It's, it's being adaptive and it's being uh, continuously honing your craft. And it's looking at how am I proactively solving my customers' problems, how am I creating foresight for my customers, mm -hmm. and how am I using all the resources in my organization. So how am I using my whole team, not just you know, out there right. schlepping a bag trying to do the best right. I can. I want to close with something very corny that I heard a long time ago. If you don't train them, you can't blame them. I like that. So that, that's exactly right. If you if organizations don't invest in their people, the reality is their people are going to give them exactly what they invested. Or in. you pay for training, no matter whether you have it or not. If you pay for training, you get an increased performance. If you don't pay for training, you get in reduced sales. That's exactly it. <laughs> and it's it's the I hate to say the old pay me now or pay me later. Right. And a lot of organizations, unfortunately, it's one of those. Um, hidden costs that organizations don't even realize they're experiencing. And you know, training is a written cost. Go write a check, invest in the people. Not training is a hidden cost that all of a sudden 
you don't even know it happened until it's too late sometimes. Thank you, Jeff. For more information, go to karoo.com.